mean when it rains on a bright sunny day? Why do you have to bite your finger when you point into the woods? And how do you protect your pregnant wife from a legless, fetus-sucking monster at night? Hi, I'm Anima. And I'm Ice. And this is... The Gods Must Be Crazy. Yep. So we are two Filipinas who are based in Singapore trying to traverse, explore, uncover, and tell ourselves the stories of weird, wild, strange, yet somehow familiar Filipino mythology. Yeah, because, um, you know, these are like, you know, superstitions and beliefs that we've, you know, heard like, you know, all our lives randomly from different people. Um, They're kind of familiar, but we don't really know where they came from. Um, or the full story behind them. So this is kind of like our attempt to, to understand that and and learn a bit more about um, Filipino mythology. And hopefully for people listening, you discover along with us as well and think they're kind of strange superstitions too. <laughs> they are. They're weirder now that we live in other countries. <laughs> yeah, no, so we try to kind of, um, you know, trace as much as we can, obviously, uh, from what's available. Um, it is an oral tradition, so we kind of like have our own um, art interpretation based on what we've learned. Um, and ideally, we also get to see as well, like, are there any like interesting themes or parallelisms either with like modern day um, experience pop culture or even like um, similar regions um, and countries and uh, mythologies uh, around us yeah so get ready for a wild ride this is the gods must be crazy podcast here we go okay so so it's the month of june all right so the month of june is traditionally lo- known to be one for weddings and wedding related themes. And so in our kickoff month for this podcast, we wanted to focus on certain stories, myths, and superstitions that had to do with love and weddings and couples. Marriage, all the childbirth, themes, all childbirth babies, yeah. and love in general. So what I wanted to talk about is, you know, my anniversary is coming up. We were oh. married. We were, were married, married in June. June. We were married I in June. I forgot about this. I to, Sorry. I had, to, I had to check my wedding ring because that's the only thing <laughs> what date we were married. Yeah, we were married. We were married in June. So we were married in June. And so we had an untraditional wedding. But there are so many, so many superstitions. And in the Philippines, we call them pamahiin mm. that you have to be worried about as if you didn't have to worry about 100 things that had to do with your wedding, like your mother or um, travel considerations, or the food, or... Um, so what was like the biggest like superstition that... The biggest superstition that was what we didn't have to worry about, but is actually apparently a common thing, is the sukob sa kasal. Ah, which is like... the one where like... If it... siblings can't, are both engaged, they can't get married within the same year. Within the same 12 months in general yes. or within the same calendar year? Calendar year. That's very right? arbitrary. So some, right? Very okay. arbitrary. So your fix is you either get married like like that book ended or you get married on the same day, which has actually happened to some people that I know. That is not it's ideal. Not, or practical. Like, <laughs> like just sharing the spotlight. The same day. Because they were brothers and they married sisters. So <laughs> that's another level, it, it, right? Um, it makes, that's, it, okay. You know. Anyways, but but uh, there so was, today like, are we gonna talk about superstitions? We are gonna talk about superstitions and and other things that are oh, linked. Oh, okay. Linked there's to a myth. marriage. All there right. is. There's a myth. All right. There's a myth connected to it. So I I I was just doing some research, and these are some superstitions that I'm glad I didn't have to deal with. Okay. When we got married. So for example, in Negros we have to put a f- some food in the corner of the house during the wedding reception food in the corner of the house okay not for ants but g- that's how you get ants but uh because <laughs> before you start because it's the plate for like the dead ancestors all right okay which i think it's like a poor one out right it's like before Doesn't you take a drink that kind of makes i mean sorry i, I guess i 
like in Bali, don't they have those like little shrines? They do, the house? they do, they do for yeah. for gods and ancestors. So it's similar yeah. to that. So I guess it's related, but you know the consequence. Mm. Oh, okay. There's a consequence if you don't put it there. Yeah. Your guests will have stomach aches and diarrhea. <laughs> I think the superstition was invented by a caterer. <laughs> and if he's like, oh no, they got the area, no, 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 it's your fault. You forgot to Wait, the... what happens if, um, <laughs> sorry, we talked about Sukob. What happens yeah. if you get married? Oh, someone you? dies, apparently. L- they die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's like gonna be a death to, to, to make up for it. Either a death in the family, a death of a child. Okay. That's what I heard. All also, right. according to the Chris Aquino, <laughs> the Chris Aquino movie yeah. of Sukhob. the same name. Or Bakwa. Was it called Bakwa? It was like Suho or Bakwa was it the Chris Aquino movie. Feng Shui? No, that was a different one, Pa. Ah, okay. There was a Suho or Bakwa one. Suho, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's another one on, um, and I think I mentioned this to you about um, once after the wedding in Batangas, where we're from is uh, after the wedding, the, the the bride goes to the husband's house because apparently that's what happens. Is that my child crying? That's a neighbor's child. <laughs> uh, and, and, the, and the wife has to eat something sweet, like a kanin, suman, or whatever, so that she will only have sweet words to say to her husband. <laughs> wow, there's a ton of there's also a ton of things of like like. Sorry, so th- she can only eat sweet things the entire day, or just no, just when house? she arrives, and she's okay. like she shouldn't talk. Oh, until she gets to the house. She can't talk until she gets to the house, and, and then, then eat something sweet, and then that's when and she, then can, she say can talk. Something. Okay, okay, all right. I, I I have problems with that. There's a lot of very misogynistic uh, <laughs> uh, uh, things, like for example, don't step on your groom's foot. When you, you walk away from the altar, because like you would do that on purpose, because I know I was like <laughs> as supposed to. What happens? Because when you step on the man's foot, you will have dominance in the relationship, and it can be a bad thing in the relationship. And I'm like, well, you, you give the guy that warning. Like, I know. Watch out like, for your watch feet. Watch out for my feet. I'm wearing <laughs> ten skirts. <laughs> I can't see what you're wearing. This is a huge skirt. I know, I know. And there's something about like, don't step on the veil. Well, duh, because it'll be like a heavy weight on the bride's head. But just like tons tons of that, like things. Uh, An interesting one too is like, don't cry. Don't cry during the wedding. Like neither, no one should cry at the wedding. Because? Because, uh, no, the bride specifically and the groom, because it will bring bad luck to the relationship. (laughs) But the biggest one, the biggest one, which will transition us, is uh, there is a pamahi in for newlyweds or people about to get married. Okay. Is that you're not supposed to do anything adventurous or you're not supposed to go on any trips. You're not supposed to like expose yourself because apparently the newlywed or the, the people who are about to mar- get married are the people who are going to be mo- most susceptible to to bad luck or bad influences you're not supposed spirits. to travel before the wedding or something and directly like after and directly, and directly. After. so no honeymoons no ah just so, go straight home and make babies. and stay there yeah 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 stay there and eat sweet things and don't say bad things so when you're like okay so think of like in the olden days or maybe in in, in recent days you go home and you, you know you live in your husband's house blah 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 you know you're starting to have babies and you know what are the things that you worry about you worry about you know how you have this new life as a wife how you get along with your in-laws blah 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 but did you know that in some places in the philippines one of the things you marry about is the new hotness that lives in the village <laughs> that not because but not because like oh now i'm a dumpy wife now and you know she might steal my husband but like if i'm a pregnant woman i might be afraid that the new hotness who moves into the village might like Eat my baby. <laughs> ah, so yes. this is about this is about the manananggal. The manananggal. The manananggal. All right. Who All right. is, uh, of course, Ice knows, but many people may not know, is sort of like the ubiquitous, ubiquitous monster, or aswang in Filipino. It's, uh, culture. it's kind of like a vampire equivalent almost. It is almost. It? it is almost a vampire equivalent. Except more unique. Why don't you 
Yes, I'll tell, you, how, I'll tell you about yeah. the, how unique the Mananangal is. So it's called, first off, it's called the Mananangal because it is, the root word is tangal, which is remove. And the physical characteristics of the Mananangal is during the day, again, as mentioned, beautiful girl. Young, pretty woman. Pretty girl, usually very long hair, very fair skin, usually, and very quiet and meek. And then during the evening, she will just separate herself at the waist and this was a very powerful visual growing up and seeing it on television like a severed um like a mannequin like yeah. essentially like just the bottom half like the waist below a waist below and you're just flying around with your shirt on and then big bat wings and then claws of course monster face and then a very long wait one second one second so she separates her body in half yes horizontally yes right so from the waist down, that part of the body is hanging out. It's left, <laughs> left behind somewhere. This is the funny thing. I always wondered, like, why doesn't it go limp? Like, if someone, I mean, it probably, it probably does. No, no, it's standing up. We don't know that. I, that's what I there says are in the drawings TV shows. where it's actually uh, that's true. Um, uh, laying down. Anyway, so here's the thing. Oh, yeah. The so <laughs> horizontally cut off at the waist. Yes. that gets left behind. We'll get back to that. But at like some guts point and in the everything. Story. It's like it's like she got sliced. Yeah. Like you'd think she the was bowels dead. are there, the but, bowels you know, are there, the spine is okay, there. Okay, and then the interesting part is the top half. So will fly away. Her her arms change into wings, don't they? No, no, she has wings on her back. Oh, she grows she needs, wings. She needs the arms okay. to 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 okay. do her bidding. So she she has the arms. She flies away, and then she goes to the rooftops, and then and, and then they had thatched roofs. They then. had thatched roofs. Is it thatch or is it like like leaves? It's, it's it's either way you can insert certain things like tongues like tongues that's that's what the mananangal does so what she does is that since she's out and about during the day she knows who's pregnant and she particularly likes babies in the womb and so she finds the house that will have the pregnant lady she'll go to like the corner and through the eaves She'll grab on with her hands, mm-hmm. not her legs, because she left those behind. <laughs> and then she, her very, very long tongue will go in through the eaves and then go through the belly button. Oh, God, that's disgusting. The belly button of the mama, and then... Like a like a needle. Like sort a, of. Yeah, like yeah, a mosquito, yeah. actually. Yeah, like a mosquito. I think the mosquitoes... <laughs> this is horrible. No, okay. I think the mosquitoes' inspiration is in it, because like it's like a tube-like yeah. tongue. Or like Almost. a, it's kind of like a hummingbird, cause it's like a. All right, let's it, go with hummingbird. And then it just lushes it up and then sucks oh, sucks God. the baby out. And then when you wake up in the morning, as a pregnant lady, you're like, oh no, or like, a, it probably comes from like all the you know miscarriages just happened and people just wanted an explanation too. Mm-hmm. But they had a lot of there's a lot of stories about like even again in Batangas where I was. That it was a very modern day thing happening. They said there has there was a manangal, your cousin's baby was attacked, but then they escaped it in time. They saw the tongue. They saw the tongue going out the window. Like stories like that from <laughs> my youth, from my teenagers. And I was like, is it really? Is it real? Um, and then they said they heard the telltale style of the manangal, okay. which is, you know, like the sound of the of the of the gecko, which is the that's, that's a really good sound. It's a good that's sound. That's a really good render. Right? Why can you do this well? <laughs> I should do this for a living. But but the thing is if it's if if it's like very soft, it means that's when he's very near. And when it's very loud, it means he's very far. So it, it he, How can that there, be? She. So she lulls you into complacency. Ah. So the softer the sound, so the, you know, it heightens the paranoia because it could be just a lizard that's freaking you out. So okay. So that's how you know if you hear a lizard, and this is the defense mechanism. This is what you do. Okay. You get a pillow and you put it on top of your belly button, and that's gonna protect you. I not have, some magic pillow. Not a holy pillow. I have questions. Not a garlicky pillow. Regular pillow. Put it on your belly button. I have questions. And you'll be good. I have questions. Okay, go. Why does she do it? Like, and does she only ah. eat babies? Yes. Mostly babies, only babies. Because, um, so unlike vampires, that they need to feed a lot. Well, the I heard that they also eat, like, non-babies. It's just that... 
Maybe it's like their one. favorite dish. Maybe it is their favorite. <laughs> it's like me. I could not eat bacon every day, but I need to eat bacon every day. Okay. So that babies are like bacon. <laughs> all right. But it's a favorite thing. But then it, it depends. So it's like it's, it's all over mythology. It's all over like modern renderings. And um, what they say is that they need to eat babies to survive and to continue the species. And some people say it's even kind of like mosquitoes. That you know how females as mosquitoes need to drink blood to lay eggs. All right, wait a second. They don't so, see, they don't. so there is some Ananangal myths that say if they need to procreate, they need to eat a baby. But how do they procreate? They make, they give birth by themselves. Sex. Yeah. It seems like they're hermaphrodites. I don't know. But that's like the, the different myths say different things. And then when they have babies, it doesn't seem like they're Mananangal right away. It seems to be tied to like coming of age, like puberty, and you know. So it could be like a girl who's lived in your town the whole time, and then when she hit, hits eighteen, she becomes Mananaga. Nice, right? You get to see if it's your destiny. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you're, <laughs> if you're one of them. Yeah, and so there's like a lot of so there's like a lot of ways that one Mananaga is made. So okay. the, the Mananaga is like they like. Uh, women oh so they they actually don't eat the babies themselves only they eat the hearts of the babies okay. the hearts of the babies but also it haunts uh newlyweds or couples in love so you're right they're not they're not gonna they're not gonna be picky they can eat the blood of someone who is sleeping too but it's babies that are a favorite thing okay so um Oh my goodness. So the reason why she likes grooms to be is because the legend is the Mananangal was a lady who was left at the altar. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. So she's left at the altar and so she's like very bitter. Ouch. Okay. So everyone has to be left at the altar. No, so what does she do to the groom to be? She'll drink their blood too. And then they'll while die? Sleeping, and then they'll die. And then they... Or maybe they'll get sleepy and not ah, make so it to the altar. Just to understand the narrative. Mm-hmm. So... She got left behind at the altar, so mm-hmm. she vowed revenge, and mm-hmm. so she's making sure that other girls get left behind at yes. the altar. Yes. Ouch. I know. Okay. But there's other things that they can that can make a mananangal, and so there have been movies where they they a mother wants to make her daughter into the mananangal, and so they rub a certain oil on their bodies of like made made. Why did she mother. want to make the daughter? Para mananangal. she'll have I know a teammate. <laughs> <laughs> so they have teamwork but then the, in the story the daughter didn't want to be a mananaga because she had a lover so that's, okay you know, that's what happens but there are surefire ways to yes. defeat the mananangal this it, is the exciting part this is the this is the, this is the part that i think uh, more people know about the mananangal yes. other yeah. than the origin and the fact that it like because there's no babies. sympathy for her the poor lady who was left at the altar <laughs> with all the food and all the bills. No. <laughs> she even had to feed the ancestors. <laughs> so I would be sympathetic to the lady. Anyway, so what you do if you suspect a lady is a mananangal is you follow, 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 follow. What do you mean? You follow her follow around? Follow her around until she gets home. And then when it's the time when the mananangal comes out, which is usually... Full moon, you know, the classic full moon, or uh, some people say when she's on her period. Ah. So you wait for that, like you wait for signs of the period, and then you go, you you, you stalk her, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then when she leaves, she leaves, it says here, the, the lower torso is standing, left standing. Okay. So what you do is you sprinkle salt, you smear crushed garlic or ash. In top of the standing torso, and that is fatal to the creature. The upper torso is also, if you keep it away um, by sunrise, it's gonna die. So if it doesn't get to reattach, the goal sunrise. will be to let to prevent it from reattaching, right? Yeah. So that's what the spices do. Like she can't. It's mahabde. Of... It's <laughs> it yeah. stings. So if you put garlic and it's salt, it's also the ingredients for adobo. Because I've heard versions where like you even put like vinegar. And then so a salt, and vinegar, and then a baby. garlic, <laughs> soy sauce, baby, baby, marinade. 
a hard boiled egg is also really nice. And then she can eat that shit. And she can because she's hungry and she's like, mmm, hard boiled egg. It's nice and soy saucy. Oh no, oh no. So, that's, that's so the goal is make sure she doesn't get to reattach. Yes. Yes. So either do something with the torso yeah. or like just you mess with hide it. it from her. Maybe. So that I've seen that too. I've seen that in some movies where they've like, oh, they spill the salt and the soy sauce. So they just sort of run around carrying the torso bottom while the, the top was chasing them. Wouldn't it suck if, <laughs> if you were in charge of, of bringing the salt? Let's say we're at Team of Mananangal okay. Hunters, okay, right. which should be a show, by the way. It should be. Wait, there's so many movies. I, imagine like you're you, like we're a team of Mananangal Hunters. We have this assistant. We're like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? We're going to tar- be in charge of everything. Just bring the salt. Yeah, just the and salt. Then, and then well, let's call him Dave. Dave okay. comes. Uh-huh. And then he comes, right? And we finally found the torso. He sprinkles it liberally. And we realize it's sugar. No! Why are we going to do it? Have, I don't you know why more. I thought of it, but I'm just like... Or what if... Eh, eh, what, what are if we going to do in that scenario? <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. It's not salt. But it has sodium in it, too. I mean, then you make humba. Hamunado. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not adobo anymore. Yeah. It's hamunado. It can work. You All can right. Work. So there's been... <gasps> So there's been tons. So it's very popular in Visayas region in the Philippines, Capiz, Iloilo, Antique. I don't know why. I was asking Yaya about it. Yaya is from Iloilo. Mm-hmm. And she says, I don't know why they're talking about there's always Mananagal monsters and witches there. There aren't any. And there have been rumors that it's, it's as I have ask, I won't pick up. But it's like there's been rumors that it was used by the Japanese um, and maybe the Americans to keep people away from secret places. Because it's like, don't go here, there's Mananangal here. Or don't go there, there's Mananangal there. But that, so that's one of the conspiracy theories. But there have been historical accounts. So there is a, a Father Juan de Placenca in 17, in, in, yeah, sorry, in 1589. Mm-hmm. And he has an account of uh, the Mananangal. A personal encounter? No, but it was like oral tradition. Mm-hmm. So it says the seventh was called a man, man, magtatanggal mm-hmm. and his purpose was to show himself at night to many persons without his head or entrails so it's a different version it was such a, it, it in such wise the devil walked around and carried or pretended to carry his head to different places and in the morning returned it to his body remaining as before alive this seems to be a fable although the natives affirmed that they have seen it because the devil probably caused them so to believe this occurred in Catanduanes so the father said people were just making it up, but the people believed it because the devil believed it. So Mananangal not real, but the devil is real. Mm-hmm. So that was what he said in a, in a book by Fray Domingo de los Santos Vocabulario de Lengua Tagala in 1703. But my favorite is all the depictions of Mananangals. On in popular, in culture. popular culture, both in the Philippines and and outside. So there's a lot of movies. There was a f- silent movie in 1927. Mary Walter, the old lady, she was the Mananangal. Was it a Filipino movie? It was. It was a Filipino silent movie in 1927 called Mananangal, di- directed by Jose Nepomuceno and was the first ever Filipino horror movie. Huh. And it's our first ever episode. Oh, wait. Podcast. I've heard of this. This is the one where we don't actually have a copy of it anymore. No, 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 no. Because the mm. uh, film is highly flammable. So they, I think they have posters of it, but they never, they don't have uh, the film anymore. And then there's one with uh, some Pagita All Stars called Mga Bata na Lagim. Herman Moreno was in it. I love how it's like the Some Pagita All Stars. Yeah, Some Pagita All Stars. Um, they turn into a mananangal after applying oil to their bodies, and then they sing a song. You'll never guess what song they were. <laughs> to turn into to turn into Mananangal. Oh, What's a song? It's, a it's whole, like a, it's like a, a transformation sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. Like Sailor Moon. What? But it's oh, a no. song that we are taught as kids. No. It's what the whole Paru Paru Book. What? <laughs> That's the song. <laughs> na, 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 na. So it's it's a butterfly. What is it? A field butterfly. Is Paru Paru Bukid. Is what you sing. You rub oil on yourself and then you sing Paru Paru Bukid. And then you, if you are Herman Moreno. You will, turn, you will turn into a mananangal. In our classic Dharna lore, Lipad Dharna Lipad, Dharna is like Wonder Woman for the yes. Philippines. Um, Gloria Romero, 
plays a respectable teacher, Miss Luna, who is secretly Manananggal. And Vilma Santos played that. I think, it, I think Manananggal is just such a visceral and iconic and recognizable yeah. villain type, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In, it's just, it's in just, Filipino culture. And so it's, it's, it's very easy to kind of... And it's not so borrowed, you know? Because it's, it's like, yeah. it, it, it has a lot of similarities with Balkan um, uh, cultures of vampires. But the thing about what I noticed about Manananggal is she's very kawawa. She's very downtrodden. You know, she's not, um, usually vampires like rich, immortal, they're like, they have clubs, they're goths and whatever. But the Mananaga is always the lady who's an outsider. Mm. She lives in the corner of the village. She's really quiet. She's not really doing any harm. And, but at night, and it's sort of like, I don't know if it has something to do with like, nasa loobang kulo, or like, there's this like, people think that people who are nice are secretly evil because why, why else are you? so nice why else are you so so great i don't know that's my thinking but anyways in marvel mm-hmm. marvel lore there's a marvel anime blade in 2011 and oh, okay. where blade goes it's called island lights blade and his partners go and encounter a mutated mananangal hunting down while well, hunting down someone in sikihor which is other in the Oh, Blade science. comes to the Philippines. Blade comes goes to the to Philippines. Sikihor. Yeah, specifically. Sikihor is an amazing place to actually For go. For mangoes, if you're, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that the one that um, like has a lot of ghost stories? Or yeah, is it yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's the one with a lot of Sikihor. Capis. Um, Capis also. Capis is more witches. Ah. I think Sikihor is more Aswang and monsters. Okay. Yeah. I think. Sorry, so he goes really there. Nice mangoes. Uh, he's hunting down Deacon Frost, which is also a, f- a popular Marvel Marvel character, I think. And then he finds a mutated Mananga and fights that Mananga. And then what's the Mananga's mutation? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's vegetarian and only eats <laughs> mangoes. Oh, what? That's what he is <laughs> thinking. Or she's like, like not a vampire bat. It's a fruit no, bat. No, she's like, hey, leave me alone. I'm vegan now. I'm vegan. <laughs> You guys can survive without me. It's better for the environment. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't be mean to me. It's guys. true. It's true. I'm not mean. I <laughs> I am mean. Uh, speaking of vegans, there's an episode. What do you mean speaking of vegans? <laughs> there's an episode of there's a spin-off of the TV show Supernatural. One uh, of my okay. favorite TV okay. shows. Called Fresh Meat. <laughs> speaking of vegans. <laughs> um and it was um they were uh, battling an aswang, or uh, a monster, who was in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And the person sucks out human organs through the tongue and inserts body parts of other humans into the victim and then seals the hole. What? The main character, they make a whip out of a stingray barb coated with spices to kill the creature. So stingray barb, stingray barb whip is also a good weapon against the manana. Okay. Like Steve Irwin, Stingray. Stingray That's fantastic. Part. But with spices. <laughs> like, it's always the spices. It's always the spices. I don't yeah. know what, what's up with that. And then there's there's the Aswang Phenomenon by our by our friend Jordan Clark, who is not our friend. He does the Aswang Project. He yeah. did a documentary called The Aswang Phenomenon. Uh-huh. And he talks about all the Aswang folklore in Philippine society, the evolution of the Manananggal, um, and he in- explores anthropological, sexual, and pop culture views. So that's something to watch if you have time. And then my favorite, there's a couple of there's a couple of video games okay. that happen that has a manananga. So it's like a Flappy Bird. But hey, you know what? I'm all for more manananga <laughs> in pop culture. Right, right. I think this is um, an underutilized. Yeah. Uh... It's called Mananang Game. No, <laughs> it is. No, a game in 2014. It's an Android game by Jigzen Game Studios. It's like Flappy Bird, but it's Mananangal. That's amazing. Mananang game. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Ang um, And then we should play this. We should. I don't have an Android, but we'll figure it out. So there's also another video game called Nightfall Escape. It's the first ever Filipino horror game in 2016. Okay. Um, and then there's that episode of Grimm I was telling you about where I didn't know the cop. I thought he was Chinese, but he's Chinese Filipino. I've never watched the show. One of his childhood friends gets uh, is pregnant and someone attacked her. 
Uh, but she escaped. It turned out it was her own mother. Her mother was the, the mother. And the mother said, your, your baby is a boy. And the Mananangalor says that you have to eat the firstborn son for the, for the, for the, for the mo- grandmother to survive. Otherwise, she was going to die. What? Yeah. So there's actually a lot of lore of like, um, uh, of like foiled attempts of Mananangal. Okay. And that's when the baby has facial deformities or any kind of deformities. They said, I, because while you were pregnant, the Mananangal was able Tried to, to eat. Exactly. Uh, so like okay. it's facial, like, I don't know, cleft palates and things like that. Okay. My favorite and okay. last uh, pop culture reference of Mananangal is... In 2016, a novel... This is very recent, okay. Yes, a model by J.D. Boringer wrote a novel called Melania, Devourer of Men. What? Where Melania Trump is a secret mananangal who struggles to keep her identity hidden after her husband becomes president. No! Now he's not, and now she's back. No, okay. So watch out. Well, well, Slovenia... <laughs> It's Melania. Oi, Melania. Melania is secretly Pinoy. That's it. Wait, what happens? Do you know what happens? I, I have to read the book first, but it's an erotic, erotic novel. So we should we should come back and reloop reloop on this. We will reloop and say, was it any good? There should I'll be just, like a mini episode that's just like what man, goes on in the story. Wikipedia, and maybe there's an addendum now that Trump was is no longer president because this was in 2008. Like she's finally free to yeah. like. Devour. Roam and devour more men. Yeah, that's true. That's why they've been having these Melania copies, body copies. What? They've been having like in public appearances, especially like in the last few months. It wasn't her. They you can you can look at the face, the nose is different, <laughs> the eyes. It's a different. So she's like it's a body double. She's like can I can I just like clone myself and it's like, like <laughs> what's that? That's her that's tongue. That's her tongue. <laughs> that's her tongue. <laughs> So that's a, that's that's my Mananangal stories. It's 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 interesting that um, to 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 kind of think about like uh, how the lore probably came up, right? So I oh. think you mentioned like people needed to find a way to explain like why miscarriages happen, yeah. why birth defects and deformities happen. You know what I think with the thing about like the groom jilting the woman at the altar because mm. they, she would drink the blood. He wouldn't die. They would just, he would just leave her at the altar. I think they were just explaining hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like I couldn't make it yeah. to the wedding because yeah. uh, a lady came in and drank my blood last <laughs> night. Not like any crazy no. bachelor parties or no. anything. No. So yeah, I think that's it. But also, I kind of feel bad because it's almost always yun yeah, the the outsider. It's almost always, oh so so this happened not even five years ago. We were in Cantilan in uh, Surigao del Norte, Brian and I, and so uh, we were with my friend Tanya who lives there, and she was saying like, oh my god, a couple of weeks ago there was a big hubbub because. They said that this guy was a mananangal and he lived at the edge of town. And they all went to her uncle's house, were sharpening, sharpening machetes. What? Yeah. And like um, making Molotov cocktails to what? burn down the man's house because he's mananangal daw. But how did they know? How would they know? Someone said that they saw them him flying in the, at night. And then because the, in their province, mananangal is also a shapeshifter. So it could have been like a, a hawk and a falcon. So they saw a big falcon or a hawk come into the man's house. And then when they went into the house, there was no big falcon. But what happened? Did they... They they went to the guy's house, but thank God he wasn't there anymore. But these... They, so he knew they were coming and then he escaped. I don't know. Maybe just... He was new in town. He didn't have family. He didn't have any connections. No one. But that's him. the first time I've heard about a guy mananangal. To be honest, me too. It's mostly women. In the lore, in the lore, there are some guy mm. mananangals, but it's a. Uh, it's kind of like how you kind of accuse like people who are isolated and quiet as witches. For yeah, example, it sounds like a witch hunt. It especially does. like it's also mostly women that that, mm-hmm. that get literally demonized mm-hmm. in a way. Literally. But so yeah, that's it. But you know what's interesting is you don't hear accounts of like, like any um, church related like 
uh, ways to combat it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking about how yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know some aswangs like they you fight them with like holy, holy water, water or, and yeah. stuff like that, or yeah. like a priest or an albulario comes here is like really like you know what. You just go find that torso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I like it. And you better bring your adobo ingredients. I think that's also why <laughs> the Mananagal is such an accessible, accessible monster. Is because even kids can foil it. Yeah. And there's an absolute vulnerability because she doesn't go after kids. She goes after the pregnant lady or the groom who's hungover, and then. So you can split up into teams and and, and we really need a show yeah that is like Mananangal hunters yeah and you know what would be amazing is what? if they're also wedding planners <laughs> <laughs> wedding baby shower baby shower <laughs> wedding planners <laughs> in the day Mananangal <laughs> hunters Mananangal hunter at night it's so good right like uh, for that your is... for your baby shower uh, for your uh, no, wedding gift. So, you know, here's your sexy lingerie <laughs> and here's a pillow <laughs> for you to put over your stuff. This is a special pregnant belly pillow. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And this it's is your ward against here lang. Girls. Here lang. Oh, another way you can avoid it is by sleeping on your side. That's not good, is it? No, because that's how you should sleep when you're pregnant. Ah, really? It's okay. actually really hard Sorry, to sleep. I, I've never been, so I... It's okay. I didn't know either. Because <laughs> when you sleep on your back, you can't Right. the baby the giant baby just like turns you down but yes this this is our next project we'll make a tv show we should this has been an episode of gods must be crazy we hope you liked uh the episode um there will be a full list of sources in the description obviously a large part of it is uh, oral tradition but we've tried as much as possible to get um, closest to the you know most reliable source uh, available. Um, so just check it out uh, if you're interested in learning more about these things. Follow us on Instagram at godsmustbecrazy.pod. Send us a DM if you have any suggestions or any other myths or stories that you want us to cover. Or if you have any corrections, we might be open to those yeah, as well. Yeah, <laughs> we'd love to hear, um, you know, if you have any other kind of information, any other interesting tidbits about the topics that we covered today. You know, we're learning along with you um, about these things. We'll also try um, when we can to kind of share a bit more information um, or background of what we covered in the episode. Like, for example, who is Garda for Sosa? For those of you who don't know, <laughs> what is the recipe for Tinola? We'll try to include that uh, as part of the uh, content. So do, do please join us there. We're going to be releasing episodes maybe twice a month. Bi-weekly, maybe. They'll, if it happens. They'll come. There's enough <laughs> stories. Um, and so please do follow, subscribe, download, review, rates on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. Thank you. Until next time. Bye. See ya.